Welcome all of you to the mathematical methods and techniques in signal processing 1. I would like to give you a brief overview of the course, what are the prerequisites, what are the co-requisites and, uh, and above all introduce you to the course. I am Shayan Srinivasa Garani, I am a faculty member within the Department of Electronic Systems Engineering at the Indian Institute of Science, Bengaluru in Karnataka. Let us look at the motivation uh, to this course. Whenever we think about signal processing, many applications come to our mind. For example, applications in communications, applications in multimedia signals, applications in biology, applications in navigation systems and something as far reaching as quantum, right. What is the commonality in all these systems? Let us take one example, uh, some things which people are familiar with, say communication systems. Imagine you have to transmit a signal through air, through a wireless medium and you have to receive the signal. The journey of a bit through the medium suffers many artifacts including intersymbol interference which is crosstalk, noise, nonlinear effects and so on and so forth. And now we have to receive this bit carefully at the receiver and then you know decipher information. So, at the reception we have to do signal processing, we receive some signal, this is analog signal, we have to do some analog signal processing, we have to sample things and post sampling we have to do digital signal processing to detect the bits and then possibly decode etcetera. So, all this journey is part of uh, the signal processing story in communication systems. Consider the example of storage, we can think about bits that have to be recorded into a medium and then read back. So, the journey of recording bit through a medium and then retrieving it is the communication process right, it is another instance of a communication process, one side is transmission, other side is storage. At the moment we have to receive the bit, there is a lot of signal processing that has to be done to detecting this bit accurately right. We receive an analog pulse and from the analog pulse we have to sample, how we sample from the sampling process all the way towards timing equalization and many aspects we have to do signal processing towards it and that is um, another application. Think about multimedia signals, uh, speech, audio, video which comprise of, of images, sequence of images etcetera. These are all multimedia signals and uh, we have to basically do signal processing. Questions like can I compress my source, what is the compression uh, limit for my speech file and still be able to receive it with a good uh, quality right. The quality is subjective and it can be often quantified through uh, several measures. Similarly with images, suppose we want to transmit images, we want to receive the images and then you know what, what, what can we do around in this process right. So, this is all signal processing, these are all signal processing applications. Signal processing does not stop with traditional electrical signals such as those received via sensors uh, like the multimedia signals or in communications etcetera. Think about biological signals right and a good example is the signals from the heart. We look at the ECG here, we monitor pressure such as aortic pressure, the ventricular pressure, atrial pressure so on and so forth and then if we want to decipher something on the heartbeats, the shape of these pulses etcetera to decipher if there is an artifact or a defect etcetera, we need signal processing to work with these systems. This is another application of signals received from sensors and signal processing post the sensing process. We have other applications such as in sonar, in radars, in navigation systems where signal detection theory is extensively used and, and then uh, quantum as well if we have to receive light pulses from these photonic qubits. Now, if you think about 
what core areas you require in signal processing well you need analysis real complex and functional analysis from math algebra both aspects of linear algebra and abstract algebra the number theory when you have to deal with transforms and efficient ways for realization of these transforms then probability and random processes which is the core for signal detection estimation and many of the problems that we see in communications optimization linear nonlinear combinatorial and many different forms of optimizations which we require nonlinear dynamics and more i mean for example if you think about neural networks it is nothing but glorified nonlinear signal processing so we need areas in core math which have to be applied to applications towards applications in engineering that that cut across many disciplines from electrical sciences to aerospace engineering and therefore signal processing is an applied math topic and has rich applications in engineering not necessarily restricted to the electrical sciences well who should take this course there are prerequisites for this course any graduate student in the world with a familiarity in linear algebra and probability at the undergraduate level can take this course also it is preferred to have undergraduate level signals and systems or digital signal processing course uh, to be taken by a student with a good standing uh, this is, these are the prerequisites and if you do not meet the prerequisites you may have to consult the instructor and there are no core requisites for this course so what do we learn in this course I mean, this is something which is important so in the first uh, pass of this course i will be covering the basics of signal theory which includes review of vector spaces inner product spaces orthogonal projections state variable representations basically review of probability and random processes signal geometry and applications in the next module we will deal with sampling and reconstruction and the basics of multi rate signal processing so i'll cover basically shannon sampling and then i will talk about reconstruction then i will delve into sampling rate conversion aspects decimation and expansion studying both the time and the frequency domain effects sampling rate conversion and efficient architectures design of high decimation and interpolation filters multi stage designs introduction to two channel quadrature mirror filter bank m channel filter banks aliasing amplitude and phase distortion um, effects and and how ways to mitigate to the, mitigate them then we will deal with the band coding and filter designs then i'll talk about some special issues uh, or special aspects in uh, fourier series mainly related to convergence i mean in in the fourier expansion and and various notions of convergence and their applications then i will begin transforms i will introduce the wavelets and the carhunen loev transform so in the wavelets we will give you a basic introduction to multi resolution analysis study the har wavelets and their properties look at wavelet decomposition and reconstruction and study applications towards denoising and i will try to relate how wavelets are linked to filter banks and i will talk about the data dependent transform which is the kl transform which is basically principal component analysis i will talk about the derivation of the transformation properties and applications and i think this is all couched within a 30 hour course program i hope all of you would enjoy the course uh, do not be scared i think the purpose is to learn and i think i would like to facilitate your learning uh, to the fullest so i encourage you to take this course and welcome you all to mathematical methods and techniques for signal processing